Good morning and welcome to Holy Comforter's Children's Worship on this third Sunday in Advent. This morning's story comes out of the book of John and it's called, Who is God's Chosen One? John the baptizer was very busy. Many, many people came to the side of the Jordan River to hear him talk. Some important leaders in the city of Jerusalem heard about John and the things he was saying. So they said, let's go out and check him out. When they found John beside the River Jordan, they asked, Who are you? My name is John. We know that, said the leaders, but are you God's chosen one? No, not at all. I'm just John. Some people say the prophet Elijah, who lived many years ago. Some say he will come back to life. Is that you? No, not me, said John. Well then, tell us, who are you? The leader sounded a little bit angry. God sent me to get people ready, said John. Do you remember the words Isaiah wrote? They are written in the scriptures in the synagogue. Isaiah said, look, I'm sending someone with a message. Well, that's me. That doesn't make sense, said the leaders. If you are not God's chosen one, and if you are not Elijah, why do you keep baptizing people? I am baptizing people with water to get them ready. Do you see that crowd of people over there? God wants them to be ready. That's because God's chosen one might be in that crowd or anywhere in this country. So who is it? asked the leaders. I don't know, said John, but I'm sure that when God's chosen one comes, I will know. Yes, I will know. So what did you hear in that story that stood out to you? Maybe something you've never heard before. What can we do to prepare our hearts for Jesus? And what can we do to help other people prepare? I want you to think about those questions for this week, and now it's time for us to do our creed. We believe in God the Father, the creator of all things. We believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who died for our sins. We believe in the Holy Spirit, who gives us our gifts to use for the body of Christ. Now it's time for us to do our prayers of the people, and the response after each prayer is, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the churches of the world. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the people who lead our country and state. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the leaders of our church. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for peace on earth and for people who have nothing to eat or drink. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the brave, alert, and strong military that they show mercy in carrying out their service. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our families, friends, and everyone around the world. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for anyone who has died and their families who might be upset. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our church to do what God asks us to do by helping our community and neighbors. Lord, hear our prayer. Now it's time for us to do our five-finger prayer. Our five-finger prayer includes all five of our fingers, and we start with our, our thumb closest to our chest. At our thumb, let's pray for those closest to you, your family. So take a minute and think about the people in your family that you would like to pray for, and let's pray for them now. Our second finger is our pointer finger. Let's pray for those that point you in the right direction, our teachers, doctors, and priests. Let's ask God to give them wisdom and support. So let's take a minute and think about our teachers, our doctors, and our priests and let's ask God to give them wisdom and support. Our third finger is our index finger. It's our tallest finger. So let's pray for those that lead us, the people in government. Let's ask God to give them guidance and wisdom. Let's take a minute and think about the people in our government who lead our communities, people like the president, governor, mayor, city managers, anyone who makes decisions for our communities, and let's pray for them now.
Our fourth finger is our ring finger. It's the weakest finger. Let's pray for those that are weak, in trouble, or in pain. We cannot pray too much for them. So let's take a moment and think about the people who need extra prayer this week. Those that are alone, those that are sick, those that are homeless, anyone who might need extra prayer this week, and let's pray for them now. And our last finger is our pinky finger. It's the smallest finger. So let's pray for ourselves and our own needs. So let's take a minute and think about the things you need prayer for this week, and let's pray for them now. And let's end in a prayer together. Holy God, we thank you so much for our time together. We thank you for the opportunity to meet, though we are apart. We thank you for your stories and for all of your blessings. We ask that you be with us this week. Help us to shine our Christ light brightly to the people around us. Help us to be kind and generous and loving, even when people are not kind and generous and loving to us. We just thank you so much for all of our blessings, especially the blessing of our church family. And we ask that you bring us back safely next week. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I hope you enjoyed this morning's lesson, and I'll see you again next week. Bye.